Today I'm going to teach you how to build a creepy, authentic scarecrow. <laughs> so you guys know I Dremel carve on this channel because I put up some tutorials a few years ago, but I haven't done it for about five years because I've been moving and hadn't had a place to do it. I've always wanted to do chainsaw carving and these are my first tries. This was my first try, this mushroom, and my second try is this pumpkin here. Chainsaw carving is hard. Uh, it's definitely different, but man, it's a lot of fun. I would not suggest with anything, like I should have just done a simple mushroom. I was trying to be fancy and that was a lot of wood to remove to forever. Before I start, um, I chainsawed most of this stuff and I'm not really going to show you how to chainsaw carve this because there's much better videos than me doing it. Um, Jordy Johnson's a good one if you want to look that up, Carving Fusion. He's how I learned how to carve pumpkins. And I didn't, for this one, I, I didn't purposely uh, put a stem in because we're going to put a hat on them. So that's what that's about. So this gives you a better idea what the head looks like. And it is made of a pine log. It's about eight inches high and about a foot and a half across. Um, that way it looks kind of more like a squishy pumpkin. What you do is you take your chainsaw and you, you lop it off into a pumpkin shape and you put you know the gills in and um, and I actually used the chainsaw to carve the eyes and I came back with the Dremel and shaped them so that gives you a better idea but let me show you the bottom so you understand how this attaches better so here's the bottom of the pumpkin and my advice is to use a larger bit for the hole so I used a one inch bit and the rebar is 5 8 so the rebar um, has a little wiggle room and what that lets you do is you can pose the pumpkin instead of it being super tight and rigid in one place. Also I left the other side completely undone so when it is early fall or maybe in the spring we can dress it up like a scarecrow and not do a scary version. Um, we can just have some fun and stick some googly eyes on it and dress him. So you know I can change him over to Santa in the summertime, uh, sorry at Christmas time, put a regular scarecrow in spring and summer. So this allows you to keep the scarecrow up year-round and then around Halloween he gets all scary. So I carved him from this white pine and this is the log I took it from. So you kind of want to cut away as much of, this is called sapwood, this white part. That's the junk wood that's kind of hard to cut and then the brown part in the middle is the, the wood you want. So that's why the head's a little smaller. So try to cut away a bunch of sapwood to make this work. So to make this more authentic and just kind of old world cool, I actually bought a real scythe um, at a flea market. It was really cheap. It was like 15 bucks because the handles kind of are busted. It's missing a handle and stuff, but check it out. It still has the original sticker. I bet this thing's close to 100 years old. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand off the rust. I want to paint it silver so it'll look good from the road and it'll reflect like when people drive by. And to sand this, all I'm doing is using one of these uh, wheels, the flap wheels. You can get these on Amazon. It's pretty easy sand and obviously wear a protective cover because you don't want to breathe rust. I just used a rust stop uh, aluminum and you see how it makes it like a silver shiny blade. So I think it looks cool. Uh, for the wood, I'm just going to clear coat it and that will hopefully keep the rain from hurting it. So I'm going to show you behind the scenes here the guts of the pumpkin. Um, it is a carved pumpkin on top. We took some branches from the yard and actually screwed them down and braced them in here. So these brace right to the, to the board. We have a small board just to kind of hold, give it some shoulders. Then we turned it so and carved the hands so they got little fingers and stuff. And that was actually kind of time consuming. That took a long time. We painted the bottom black so it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be so obvious. I want this thing to look like it's floating at night. And you'll see a little wood chip back here. And what this chip is, is to tilt the head to, and hold it the direction we want. So I want this thing looking down into the road. So people see it when they drive by, it's smiling at them. And that's what that's for. I'm going to show you how I did this to give you a little better idea how to attach it and so you can move it around. So the top of the post, I drilled a hole 
it's about eight inches down and honestly I wish I had a better fit on that I should have uh, drilled the bit the same size as the rebar I made it too big so it kind of moves around a little bit um, so that's about uh, somewhere around eight inches to a foot inside then I left up a couple inches sticking out for the head this was my third carving and it didn't turn out quite as I wanted he was supposed to have hands and like ripping out of the log but it's an alien and I light him up green at night so he looks like he's going to abduct you and probe you I mean this is you know New Hampshire where uh, a lot of alien stuff goes down but look how he's waiting for you and uh, with this if you're trying to do that I found out if you just I didn't even clear coat him I just sanded him really really bright and it picks up the light I use those little solar lights down here to change the colors and that allows me to kind of make him whatever color I want by the way if you're ever carving this clear coat stuff is almost like a stain look how much better this wood looks all I did was spray the clear coat on it so we got the scythe up but it was kind of hard it was a lot of trying to figure it out since it's a real scythe it weighs a lot we actually attached it to a tree we tied it um, we zip tied it to the hand which you won't really see from far away and then let me show you how we brace the weight so here's how we hold most of the weight there is a little shelf I attached that's hidden behind the cloth and then what happens is we zip tied this little plastic ring to it and this lets it spin and move the direction uh, however we want to aim it and then we uh, zip tied down everything else like the hands and all so this seems to work pretty good to add a little fright to our project we bought red reflective tape and we're going to put it into the eyes and then we'll just pin it in with uh, black uh, thumbtacks so when the cars drive by the red will reflect out oh that looks wicked so we put the red eyeballs in and tacked them so that's what they're going to look like they should reflect light uh, hopefully they work if not we'll just pull them out so we took a minute and we tacked down a hat and that's the cool thing about using a wooden pumpkin is uh, you can nail put nails to hold the hat down or tacks we just hit them in there let's hope it holds to give it like a spooky whiskey effect we ordered gray cheesecloth and black cheesecloth uh, I think they're just you just look up like Halloween I think they're actually called cheesecloth <laughs> probably well, this one's cheesecloth this one looks more like netting but it's good or Halloween netting yeah all right so we're going to drape it over to give it more of a spooky look so stuff blows in the wind so we're cutting the uh, ends so they're all frayed don't tear them cut them and they'll last a lot better so get a better idea what it's starting to shape up as and then let's, we'll show you when it's all done so here's a better idea what it's going to look like remember this is about almost eight feet high to get on ladders to get there but so the we put black then gray then black that's what we came out with and you cut the end so it looks all wispy I'm gonna put a lantern in his hand and I think we're done there you go. So we are about 20 feet away here's what it looks like in the daytime all complete we put a lamp in his hand with LED lights in it and the scythe's out in full blast and again you don't realize this thing is about seven to eight feet like this alien is four feet so it gives you an idea how tall this thing is sitting out of the yard I'll show it to you at night but we, we're pretty happy with it it's pretty good for a first dry and if you cut these ends right you can see how it wisps around it looks all spooky isn't that cool get a good idea what it looks like at night probably gonna light it a little different but you get a idea here <laughs> 